All right. So um, what we've been doing, well, really for the past 15 weeks or what I've been doing in the public classes that I teach is looking at the sequences that are in the back of the book of Light on Yoga. And they're presented in, in interesting ways. We're on week 15 now. And week 15 changes a lot. It puts headstand first, though we're not going to do it, do it first. Uh, it introduces also some belly down back bends <coughs> and a few more shoulder stand vari variations. And then after shoulder stand, he, Mr. Anger also presents some seated forward bends. So it's a pretty big sequence. I actually did get through all of it in my Friday class. So we may try and do that today and not spend, well, spend too much time on any one particular pose you know, since we focused on the back bends specifically and the forward bends last week. That's the general plan. Probably going to keep it up at least through course one. Uh, the poses start getting pretty hard uh, pretty quickly after that. But it's been really interesting to me to lead us through that. And I can really tell that my own poses have felt stronger and more stable. And I can see an increased fluidity also just even through the Zoom screen and people's uh, practice. And so it's a uh, Really, if you want to open your book and follow along with what the poses are, you're welcome to do so, but I'll talk about them as well. Okay, so go ahead and sit in Sukhasana or Swastikasana with your legs crossed. The difference between those two poses, at least in terms of my understanding, is when you do a pose that's usually called Swastikasana, you turn the soles of the feet up toward the ceiling. And you also pull the feet in a little bit closer to the support you're sitting on. And once you've turned your feet, you lift your, quad, lift your calf muscles up and turn your thighs from the inside out. Now that draws the sitting bones in closer together and you should feel a lift coming into your chest. We'll do Sukhasana after we do Swastikasana just so you can feel the difference about it. And this particular pose, I like it because it really releases the groin and helps the groin deepen. Also, there's a nice way to press the feet down, energetically lift the ankles up and you should feel some firmness coming into your outer hips. And connect that firmness with the outer hips with the upward lift of the chest and then close your eyes and fold your palms together at your heart. As you inhale, make yourself taller from the tailbone all the way up through the head. Keep that height and as you exhale, draw the prana, the energy of the breath, outward toward your side ribs and armpits. Inhale, make yourself tall. Keep that height. Exhale, make yourself broad. Inhale, extend yourself. Exhale, expand yourself. Use the breath to create inner spaciousness. Then use the breath by watching the exhalation with your mind and draw your mind to that inner landscape, that inner spaciousness that you've created with the inhalation and the exhalation. Let the mind inhabit that space within. And then from that space within, let's chant three arms together. Um... Follow that sound with your mind. Follow the reverberation of the sound with your mind. And from that space, inhale once more. Keeping your chest well lifted and broad, bring your chin down to your chest and your hands down to your thighs with your palms up. And raise your head and open your eyes. Notice which leg you've got on top. You've got my right leg on top. We'll switch it in a second, but we're going to do parvata, um, parvatas in the hands. So stretch your arms out and interlace your fingers well. Keep your elbows as straight as you can as you turn your thumbs down toward the floor, and that'll help you get a little bit more of stretch in the center of the wrist, or the, front, the thumb side of the wrist. And reach your arms all the way up above your head. Press your feet down, energetically lift the ankles up, continue that lift up through the side ribs, suck your elbows in, and extend up through the wrist bones. Really make yourself tall. And lift up one more time, lift your chest well, bring your chin down to your chest, reach up with your arms and back with your arms, up with your arms and back with your arms, then raise your head, and then bring your arms all the way down. Notice which finger you got on top. So I got my right finger on top. And you're going to switch both the legs and the arm position. So stretch your legs out. Switch the cross of your legs. So bring your right leg in first. Take your hands and turn the soles of the feet up toward the ceiling. 
your calves up toward the ceiling and turn your thighs from the inside out. And all of that just sets up external rotation in the legs and should result in a deepening of the groin, a firming of the outer hips, and you should also feel your sitting bones draw in toward each other a little bit more. And all of that sets up a nice ability to lift the chest more. And then stretch your arms out again and interlace your fingers the opposite way. Turn your palm, keeping your arms as straight as you can, turn your palms toward me. We get a nice stretch through the thumb and the first finger. Then reach your arms all the way up above your head. Press your feet down and energetically lift the ankles up. Continue that lift all the way up through the ribs, through the armpits, extend from the elbows, through the wrist bones, make yourself tall. Keep that height in the side ribs as you bring your arms all the way down and stretch your legs out into Dandasana. Join your big toes together and spread your other toes wide apart. And those actions of the feet should result in you feeling some firmness come into the quadriceps. But then also lift your quadriceps, lift your inner thighs, and spread your palms, put your hands beside you and do a nice Dandasana, staff pose. Extend from the armpits through the elbows and press those wrists downward toward the floor. All right, so the next pose is still a cross-legged pose and it's called Sukhasana, which means pose of ease. The first one just meant pose of the cross. And the salient differences between them are largely with where you keep the position of the feet and, and what you do with the feet. Yeah. So take your right hand on the inside of your left hand on the inside of your left knee and just put, keep your foot flexed and put your foot right underneath the middle of the shin of your left leg and stay on that little toe side of the foot, and then do the same thing with the other leg. So you're on the little toe side of the foot rather than the top of the foot. And so to maintain that, you have to extend a little bit more from the inner knee through the inner heel. Also, your feet are light, should be lined up right underneath your knees rather than being pulled tight in back by what you're sitting on. So for me, it, it actually takes a little bit more conscious awareness really to stay on the tops of the feet. You keep extending through the, sorry, on the sides of the feet. You should feel a similar drawing up from the uh, outer knee to the outer hip. Now stretch your arms out and hook one thumb over the other thumb. Pull your thumbs against each other as you stretch through your ring fingers. Keep pulling your thumbs against each other and reach your arms all the way up. Pull the thumbs against each other, extend up through the ring fingers, make yourself nice and long so you should feel the abdomen draw in toward the spine. And release your hands down. Notice which thumb you've got on top. Notice which leg you've got on top and switch them. And again, stretch your legs out into Dandasana. Join the big toes together and spread your other toes wide apart. From the little toe side of the foot, draw up into the outer hips and then add your arms. Extend from the armpits, through the elbow, through the wrist bone down to whatever you're sitting on. And then do the second side. So bring your opposite leg in, staying on the little toe side of the foot and do the same thing. So the, you know, the feet are right underneath the knees and extend from the inner knee through the inner heel and you can energetically drag your feet in opposite directions and they won't move, but that dragging action of dragging the feet should result in you feeling some firmness in the outer hips. And Put the opposite elbow thumb over the thumb that you had on top first. Pull your thumbs against each other and reach your arms all the way up above your head. Keep pulling your thumbs against each other. Stretch up through your ring fingers. Make yourself tall. Lift up so much that you feel the armpits open and you feel the lower abdomen draw in a bit. And then release your arms down and stretch your legs back out again into Dandasana. Then come onto your hands and your knees. Place your hands near the front edge of your sticky mat. Yeah. Spread your palms well. Again, extend from the elbow through the wrist bone and I'll keep pressing through the thumb and the first finger side of the hand and then turn your biceps toward the front of the screen turn, or the mat, turn your toes under and then push back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Keep pushing your hands down and forward as you bring the weight of the pose back into the legs. First dog of the day, so just take stock of how things are and just let your head hang. Get ready to do headstand. Do a couple preparatory, more preparatory things for headstand. But if you aren't, you know, some of you are new to me and it's wonderful to have new students. But if you, if you don't practice headstand, it's, it's totally fine. 
that downward facing dog is something that you can do when other people are doing headstands. Or say you're on your cycle, you can do downward facing dog instead of headstands. Right? So there are plenty of valid reasons not to do headstands, but there are also plenty of valid uh, alternatives. So you should feel like you have something to do when headstand rolls around. Looks good, everyone. All right, then walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. And stay in Uttanasana, standing forward bend for just a, a few cycles of breath. You can hold your hands and your elbows if you would like to, or you can put your hands on the floor. This pose, Uttanasana, Sanskrit, standing forward bend, is also a pose that you can do instead of headstand. And, and half of your body is upside down. Has a lot of similarities with headstand. You can really push the fingers down and lift the shoulders up, for instance. That would be very good training and preparation for sheer shots in the headstand. Then come forward to the concave stage of the pose. Place your hands on your pelvic bones. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. And then just stand in Tadasana, not just. One of my teachers. There is no just. You're doing whatever you're doing. There's no just about it. And join your big toes together like we did in Dandasana and spread your other toes wide apart. Lift up through the quadriceps, through the inner thighs, through your outer legs, and also drawing your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other. That firmness in the outer leg should result in you feeling a lift coming into your chest. And then stretch through your ring fingers down toward the floor. Okay. We're going to practice upside down headstand. Okay, so you're going to interlace your fingers, then put your hands on the back of your head. And where they go, if you you can actually uninterlace with one hand and keep keep your left hand on the back of your head and just put your right hand on the top of your head, okay, like it's the floor. And then you can raise or lower the forearm as needed so that your forearm touches the fingers of your right hand. And that's where your hand should be on your, on your head. Then just sneak your other hand in. Okay. Then come out to the balls of your feet. Really try and push through the big toe side of your foot. Okay. And you'll feel that that actually requires some balance. Right? And the shape of your foot that you're in now is also the shape of the foot that you need when you're upside down standing on your head. Okay. And lower your, your heels down. Notice which finger you had on top. Switch the grip of your fingers. Put your fingers in headstand position on your head and pull your elbows in so that they're right underneath your shoulders, or right over your shoulders in this case. Squeeze your legs together and come up onto the balls of the feet. Keep pushing through the legs. And I mean, I do actually really feel, yeah, it's, it's, this is actually a balancing pose. In some ways, it's harder to balance standing on the toes. Draw your abdomen in. And that's a nice way to build strength in the legs, stamina and stability. And then we'll just turn that upside down. Okay. okay, so then lower your heels and release your hands. Okay, so you've got three things to do if you don't do headstand. You've got downward facing dog, you've got standing forward bend, or you can repeat upside down headstand. Okay. I personally like to Use a, I've been using the wall lately just to get some feedback in terms of alignment. I like to use a blanket for the head, but you don't have to use the wall. You can be in the middle of the room. So how you do it, you kneel down, you interlace your fingers about an inch away from the wall. Does that just get, or they can be all the way at the wall. When you're all the way at the wall, it's hard to come up two legs at a time. So you may want to come up one leg at a time. But you settle into headstand. And the really important things about headstand are you've got to extend from the elbows through the wrist bones and press the forearms down in order to lift those shoulders up. Maintain that shoulder lift. Okay? That keeps the neck safe and strong. Okay? Then move your buttocks up to your heels. Turn your thighs from the inside out. Join your legs together. And just like we did in Swasti and Sukhasana, extend from the inner knee through the inner heel, spread your toes, 
And from the little toe side of the foot, you draw down to the outer hips. Okay, so the legs are basically doing dandasana. And then what I do in a headstand is I just keep repeating those points to myself. I just keep on saying, press the forearms down and lift the shoulders up. Move the buttocks toward the heels. Turn the thighs in, extend through the inner knees. And it's just like a little litany of instructions that I, for many, many years, have just given to myself to make sure those things are happening. The most important one, though, is to keep the shoulders well lifted. If you feel your shoulders starting to come down toward your ears and you can't lift them back up, prior to that point, you should come down. But over time, you can build up staying in headstand for really quite long and significant periods of time. I'm going to come down and just take a look at you. Give you a little feedback. And that you can also, you can work on, you know, we're building some stamina here. That looks good, Darlene. Looks good, Melinda. Hey, Carly, good to see you. I can't actually see you right now, but good to see you. Right, and then Marsha, that looks good also. Leanne, good, nice choice, L Lauren, good, Karen. All right, and everyone now, keep your shoulders well lifted and come all the way down and rest in downward taking child's pose. Adho Mukha Virasana. If you don't know what that pose is, then you just keep your toes together, have your knees a little bit wider than your torso and fold forward. It's just, a, it's a nice pose to do after Shir Shasana. It just gives you time to come back to a more non upside down state. I'm, a, I'm personally a very big fan of inversions. And they, where I would say that they, of all the yoga that I've done, they've really had the most radical impact on my emotional and mental outlook. And I really enjoy doing them. I have been having a few issues with my neck lately, so I've been having to rethink some of my approaches to doing Shir Shasana. So I also, even though I'm a fan, I understand that there are plenty of reasons that one might not want to do it. And that's why we have alternatives. All right, so stand in Tadasana on the center of your mat. This sequence in the back of light and yoga has a whole bunch of standing poses and then belly down back ends. So we're just gonna, uh, not quite flow, but we're gonna go through the standing poses uh, relatively quickly. Okay. So bring your feet, hands up to your chest and either step or jump your feet out wide. Okay. Lift your quadriceps, spread your toes and lift your quadriceps, turn your back left toes in and your front right leg out, turn your torso toward the screen, and come into Trikadasana. Extend from the tailbone all the way up through the head. Then press into your back heel and come all the way up. Then walk your feet in a little bit. Okay. Stay on the same side, but come up onto the back ball of your foot and turn your leg a little, back leg a little bit more, then put the heel back down. And then just reach your hand down into Paririta Trikadasana. Revolve triangle pose. Extend from the tailbone through the head, turn your rib cage, and then swing yourself all the way back up. Turn your feet and come back to the center and step or jump your feet back in. You may need to change the position of your mat or you can stay in the center. Step or jump your feet out wide. So we'll do triangle pose, come back up and do revolve triangle pose again. Okay, on the second side. Okay. Right, so turn your back or left, right toes in and your front left leg out and turn your torso toward the screen. Okay. Press into your back heel and tip over and come into Trikonasana. Extend from the tailbone through the head, extend through the ring fingers, press into your back heel, come all the way up. Paribhita Trikonasana is a little bit of a shorter stance. So you can move your back to leg foot in a little bit, come up onto the back ball of your foot and rotate, turning that back leg so your torso comes to face toward the front leg, extend your heel down, and then just keep on rotating your torso down. You can place your hand on a brick, on the big toe side of the foot, or on the little toe side of the foot, whatever is available to you. Extend from the tailbone of the head, 
and exhale, turn and rotate again. And swing yourself all the way back up and stand in Tadasana. All right, the next two are Parjvakanasana and Parivrita Parjvakanasana. And so Parjvakanasana, again, step or jump your feet out wide. That means side ankle pose and revolve side ankle pose. Turn your legs just like you're doing for Trikonasana. Press into your back heel and bend your knee to form a square. Okay. Then tip over again and put your hand on the outside of your leg and reach your arm up over your ear. Press into your back heel, extend from the rib cage, through the armpits, through the ring finger, and then swing yourself back up. And narrow your stance a little bit. Come up onto the ball of the foot. Bend your knee again, and then exhale and see, can you get your outer right arm off somewhere on the outside of your right thigh? Press through your back heel, extend from the top of through the head, then add your top arm over your ear, and swing yourself all the way back up and jump your feet in. The nice thing about going through the poses pretty quickly, you only have to do prior to pars rakanasana once, but it actually went on that side really pretty well for me. All right, so second side, step or jump your feet out wide. Spread your toes well, keep lifting from the quadriceps to the inner thighs. Turn your legs like trikonasana. Bend your knee. Bring your hand down and come into Parjvakanasana, side angle pose. The legs in an angle and you're stretching the whole side of your body. I think that's why it's called that. Then come back up, turn again, bend the knee. You can let your heels stay off the floor for a second. And then inhale, really lift up and get length. And then on an exhalation, reach and try and get your upper arm to the outside of your leg. Maybe your hand to go to the floor, maybe not. And extend from the tailbone through the head and reach your hand over your head. Swing yourself all the way around, come back up and come into Tadasana. All right, next little set of poses are the Virabhadrasana poses. Okay, so we're gonna do the Virabhadrasana poses in a nice little flow. <coughs> Mm -hmm. We're going to do Vera 1, Vera 2, Vera 3, okay. back to Vera 1, back to Vera 2. Then from Vera 2, we're going to straighten the leg and come into Ardha Chandrasana. Okay, so that's the next set of poses. All right, so ready? Place your hands at your heart. Lift your chest up into your, lift your sternum up into your thumbs. Extend up from the armpits through the elbows. Come up into Urdhva Namaskarasana. Walk your feet out wide. Okay. And then turn your whole torso toward your right leg, very much like the turn of, trick of, of the Parvita poses. Keep your back leg as straight as you can as you bend your front knee to form a square. Extend up and look up toward the ceiling. Reach your arms up. And then turn and face the screen. Reach your arms out. Then turn again and reach your arms up into Vera 1. Make your back leg as strong as you can as you lean over and put your abdomen on your thigh. Mr. Iyengar says to take two breaths and then launch yourself off where you're standing just on your right leg. Then back to Vera one, back to Vera two. Straighten your leg and come into Trikonasana. Place your hand on your hip. Pick a point at the wall to focus on and bend your knee. Take a big step in, put your hand on the floor or a brick, and then stretch that leg up to Ardha Chandrasana. Keep the leg straight and strong and firm. Very similar work to Virabhadrasana 1. It's just that the, uh, sorry, Vira 3, it's just your orientation of the body is a little bit different. Then back to Trikonasana, step or uh, the good, and then come up and come into Tadasana. So that was a whirlwind ride through the Virabhadrasanas and Ardha Chandrasana. And we have one more side to do. Okay. Luckily, we're not octopi. It would take a really long time to do yoga. Okay. All right, so, <laughs> so I have a brick here for when I'm going to use it for Ardha Chandrasana on the second side. Okay. okay, so step or jump your feet up. Oh, actually, start off in Namaskarasana. 
Lift your chest well up into your thumbs. Keep lifting your chest up as you extend from the armpits through the elbows and really reach your arms above your head. Feel that opening in the armpits and then step or jump your feet out. Turn your torso so it faces toward the leg and that turn really happens through the back leg. Keep your back leg straight and strong here as you bend your front knee. And then look up toward the ceiling, really lift your arms up, turn your head back down, swing out and now really lift your arms out wide. Okay, so we're opening the chest by lifting up then opening the chest by lifting out Then go back to lifting up in Vera one. You know, real key for Vera Bhadrasana three for me is really keeping the back leg stable and strong. Even as you lean over and get your belly to your thighs, even as you launch off, Keep that back leg as straight as you can. And then even when you're reaching out of Vera 1 to back to Vera 1, keep that back leg strong. Lift your arms up again. Lift your arms out when you go to Vera 2. Straighten your front leg. Do Trikonasana. Extend from the tailbone through the head. Place your hand on your hip. Pick a point to focus on on the wall or even up toward the ceiling. Bend your front knee, take a break if you need it, and come into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Ardha Chandrasana often is sequenced like this after some big standing poses because it is actually, uh, it's very soothing once particularly you find your balance. Then swing back to Trikonasana, come all the way up and stand in Tadasana. And just feel that energy and vitality that comes from doing the standing poses. Just feel lots of lift in the chest. I haven't really had a chance to drink much of my coffee today, but I actually feel like I've actually had it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's kind of the second set of the standing poses, right? There's the Trikonasana and the Paravritas. Then there was the Vera one tagging on Ardha Chandrasana. The next set is a whole bunch of standing forward bend work. Okay. And so it's Parjvottanasana, which means side stretching pose, Pusaradapadottanasana, head on the ground pose. And then two, two couple of poses that I'll talk about a little bit. But, but that's where we're going. And all of those are very calming, good for the hamstrings, good for the heart. Okay. So Parjvottanasana first. You can go ahead and bring your hands up to your chest. Extend from the armpits through the elbows and reach your arms up into Urdhva Namaskarasana again. Then turn your palms away from each other, reach your arms way, way, way back behind you, bend the elbows, and then place your little fingers up on your back. It may be, if this is too much on anyone's wrists, you can just hold the, the hand, you can hold the elbows, or you can even just keep your hands on your hips. Right, let's try that one more time. Release your hands. Place your hands at your heart. Lift your chest up into your thumbs. Even here, practice keeping the heel of the hand together. So extend from the elbow to the heel of the hand. Now, as you reach your arms above your head, do that more because okay? it's harder and reach your arms up, but really try to get, get the, from the elbow through the heel of the hand and keep those in contact with each other as much as you can. Then release your hands away from each other, turn your arms inside, turn your palms away, and then you're going to put your hands as much as you can into Namaskarasana behind your back. Now, in this one, my heel of my hand does not go together, but I still am thinking I'm going to extend from my elbows through the heel of my hand and maybe just a little bit, the heel of the hand will come a little closer together. Then walk your feet out wide. This is another pose where you turn toward the front leg. Now you've got your arm on your back to help yourself turn more. Then do a nice back arch and look up toward the ceiling so your front body gets nice and open. Keeping your back leg very, very strong and your front quadriceps and inner thighs engaged, hold forward and bring your forehead down toward your shin. You can reach with your chin or you can reach with the crown of the head. They both work, have slightly different effects on the neck. 
If you lose your balance, let go of the grip and just put your hands on the floor. And press into your back heel as you come all the way back up and do another back arch looking up toward the ceiling. And straighten back out. Turn yourself toward the screen and walk your feet up. And then release your hands down. All right, let's do one more namaskar asana prep. Okay, so namaskar, lift, extend from the elbows through the wrist bones. Keep doing that as you reach your arms above your head so you get nice opening in the armpits. Keep the opening in the armpits and the chest as much as you can and swing your arms back behind you. Wiggle, see if you can, third time around, see if you can wiggle your fingers a little further up. And step or jump your feet out wide. Turn your legs like Vera One and Paribhita Trikonasana. Keep your back leg strong and use your left, your hands on your ribs to help rotate the ribs around. And when you do the standing back arch stage, you can wiggle your fingers a little bit more up into the sternum and keeping the back leg strong, front leg long, fold forward and bring your forehead down toward your shin. You can play with the head position of lifting the chin versus extending to through the forehead. Come all the way back up, keeping your back leg strong and do a standing back arch. Turn your feet back to the center and then release your hands down. All right, the next one is called Prasarda Pada Tanasana. It's extended wide apart foot pose. Let me check I'm doing on time. Walk your feet out wide. Place your hands on your hip. Do all of your leg actions, even if I don't say to do them, do them. Which leg actions is just a shorthand word for all of the things that your legs know how to do. So whatever, whatever direction that you can remember me rattling off at some juncture, do it. <laughs> and it becomes your, your instruction to yourself. All right, pull your elbows closer together so you feel your collarbone get broad. This one also in light on yoga has a, is a big back arch stage. So before we fold forward, arch back and look up toward the ceiling and maybe you can even see a little bit of the wall behind you. And keeping your legs strong and sides of the torso and front body long, fold forward and bring your hands down to the floor, first right underneath your shoulders. Spread your palms well. Turn your biceps toward the front of the mat, just like you do in downward facing dog. Okay, that's the second stage or first stage on the floor. Then walk your hands back where they're in line with your feet. Now you might not keep your arms straight and still look forward and you get a really nice stretch in the back of the wrist. If it's too much for you, you can move your hands in. But even if your wrists don't touch the floor, do that same work of extending from the elbows through the wrist bones. Then bend your elbows down and put the head, if you can, put the head on the floor with your legs straight. If you can't reach the floor with your head, then just raise the floor up with a brick or two. Take a few breaths here. Then keep your hands where they are and come back to the concave stage where you stretch your wrists. Then walk forward where your hands are right underneath your shoulders and wiggle your feet in a little bit, place your hands on your hips and come all the way up. It was called Prasarda Padottanasana one. And then there's Prasarda Padottanasana two, which has two stages. If your head again didn't touch the floor on the first one, you wanna make sure you have something to put underneath your head because both of these versions of the pose are hands-free versions. Okay, so it's a little bit more challenging balance-wise, right? So place your hands on your hips and walk your feet out wide, okay? Pull your elbows back and you'll feel your shoulder blades come in and you'll feel your collarbone broadening. So it's basically preparing you for the belly down back bends. Keep your quadriceps well lifted and do another standing back arch, opening that front body. Then this one, you come forward, you maybe need to wiggle your feet out a little bit more, but keep your hands on your hips and lower your head down to the floor. Keep lifting your shoulders up. If you need to use your hands, it's fine, but this is just, this is the hands-free version. So it requires a good bit more of the legs particularly when you come up. 
Maybe you need to wiggle your feet in and then stand in Tadasana. All right, then the grand finale of Prasarada Padottanasana is with your hands behind your back. Right? So again, pick a behind the back position that'll work for you. Walk your feet out wide. Do the standing back arch stage, looking up towards the ceiling. You need to straighten out my mat. Good. We'll look up toward the ceiling, coax a little bit more opening out of your sternum by wiggling your fingers up. Legs strong, sides of the torso long, fold forward. And oh no, the floor seems even further away than it was. So there are a couple options for that. You can wiggle your feet out, you can put a blanket out, down. And then take a couple, two, three, four breaths here. Notice a nice stretch of the hamstrings. And keep your legs strong, sides of the torso long, come all the way up. And then release your hands and walk your feet out. Okay. Well, we're still on the standing forward bend work. So there are two poses uh, coming up. One's called Pada Hastasana, where you get your big toe with your fingers. And that looks like this. Here's my big toe. And you grip with your fingers. The other one, you put your hand right underneath your foot. Okay, so that's what's, that's what's next. So stand with your feet about hip width apart. Place your hands on your hips again. You can do a little bit of a back arch here as well, opening that front body. And fold forward and then take hold of your big toes with your first two fingers and then fold the thumb over the fingers. Turn your biceps toward the front of your mat and keep the sides of the torso and the front body long in the first stage. Then pull on your toes, let your elbows go out wide and come down into the full stage of Padangashasana. Lengthen from the tailbone through the head. And take several, at least two or three breaths. And in those breaths, can you extend the sides of the torso down and you Then come back to the concave backstage, release your toes, and then come all the way back up. So that's called Padangushtasana. The next one is Padahastasana, where you put your hands right underneath your feet. Okay. Padas are feet, hastas are hands in Sanskrit. So fold forward, lift your right foot up, spread your right hand, and put your hands right underneath your foot. Do the same thing on the other side. Extend from the tailbone through the head. And then as you exhale, fold yourself down. Let your elbows go wide. Keep lifting up through the quadriceps and the inner thighs. And as you exhale, can you pull yourself in toward your, your torso and toward your legs just a little bit more. Then take your hostas out from underneath your padas. And then come all the way back up. And the next one is it's last of the standing poses in the sequence is called Uttanasana. Oh, I forgot Parigasana did a well. Right. So last week I forgot Ardhashandrasana. So. But join your legs together, place your hands on your hips, do a little standing back arch and you'll feel this nice opening coming through the front body. Fold forward and bring your hands first down to the floor underneath your shoulders and look forward. Lift your quadriceps and your inner thighs. Second stage, can you bring your hands back in line with your feet, still looking forward. And third stage, walk your hands even further back behind your feet and fold forward and let your head come down to the floor. Even, I mean, that, well, toward the floor, it's not gonna touch the floor. And then you can push with your armpits through your elbows to get the heel of the hand down. But that also helps you to get the torso closer to the legs. Then walk your hands back to the first concave stage. Place your hands on your hips. Roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. Oh, Parigasana actually goes there. Okay, excellent. Parigasana means gate lex pose. And it is the last of the standing poses that we'll do today. All right, so put your blanket down if you need it for your shins. 
Kneel down onto your shins. Extend through the toes. Move your buttocks toward your heels. Bend your right leg out, kind of like you were going to do Parigasana. I'm sorry, you won't. Yes, you are going to do Parigasana, but Parjva. Parjva Kanasana first stage. And we'll do a couple of versions of Parigasana. The first one, keep your leg bent. Reach your hand down on the inside of the leg and get hold of the little toe side of the foot. And then push your arm and your knee against each other to rotate the torso open. Then reach your arm up and straight by your ear, just like you were doing in Pariga in Parjva Kanasana. Then come back up, straighten the leg out, point your toe, stretch your arms out and turn your palms up and then reach over and bring the right foot to right hand and you can try and close the gate of the latch with the pose, feeling a wonderful stretch through the side body. And then come all the way back up, stand on your shins again, bend your leg off to the side, Reach on the inside of your leg and reach over to get the little toe side of the foot. Push your knee and your arm against each other and rotate your torso open. Then add your arm. Good, these look nice. And come all the way back up. Straighten your leg out like Trikonasana. Turn your arms out and turn them up so your chest gets really nice and open. Keep pressing down through your shin and then tip yourself over into full parigasana. And then come out of the pose, stand on your shins again, and then go ahead and lie down on your abdomen. Actually, oh, wait, let me, hold on, let me double check. Yeah, we do the belly down back then first, okay. So all of those standing poses, for those of you who are just kind of joining in on this little project that I've been leading us through, have been there for several weeks. And so we went through them pretty quickly because we've broken them apart in other weeks. And last week we were on the same sequence and we spent a lot of time unpacking the belly down back bones. And now we're in the first of the belly down back bones. And the first one is Shalabhasana, which means the locust pose. So just rest your forehead on your forearms for a second. Turn your thighs in. Then stretch back through all 10 toes. And hopefully when you do that, you'll feel that your knees lift off the ground a little bit. But if they don't, or you feel like they can lift up more, engage the muscles of your knees a little bit more. But that's, that's really the action of the legs. But then you're gonna lift the legs off the floor. So put your hands by your sides, engage your legs well, particularly trap in the knee, roll the shoulders back, lift your chest, lift your arms and your legs up. Keep extending back through your legs. And then from Shalabhasana, reach your hands up behind your head and come into Makarasana, crocodile pose, and then lower yourself down. And take a little breather. And you can rest your forehead on your forearms. So we did a bunch of standing poses. And so it's nice just to have a different let's say, connection with gravity. And turn your thighs in again. Practice stretching through all 10 toes so the knees come up and tighten the knees a little bit more and see if you can walk your legs a little bit closer together. If you can keep your legs touching, great. And stretch your arms back behind you. Roll the shoulders back and lift the arms up. Lift the legs up. Reach back with your arms so you can really feel that chest lift. And then swing your arms around and interlace the fingers the opposite way for Makarasana. And then lower yourself down and rest. All right. The next one is called Dhanurasana, which means bow pose. The actions of the leg are pretty much similar, except that the leg is bent. 
And we'll just practice the leg actions for a second. You're gonna bend up your right leg, flex your foot, and then see if you can lift the leg off the ground a bit. Then point your foot and see if you can lift your leg a little bit higher. Then lower that leg back down. Take a couple breaths. Bend up your left leg. Flex your foot and feel how the hamstring engages. Then lift the thighs up, lift the leg up a little bit more, and then point your toes and lift the legs up still more. And then lower the leg down. Then keep the hands at your sides for a second, then both legs up, flex the feet, reach back and see, can you get your ankle with your hands? And if you can't, you can throw a strap around them. Flex your feet again and feel how that opens the chest. Now kick back with your legs and up with your legs and use your hands to lift the legs up higher Then point your feet and use your hands to lift the legs still higher and then release your legs down and come down and rest. And so that's called Dhanurasana. It's actually one of my favorite poses. All right, then second side, whoops, well, not second side, but second time around, it's not a two-sided pose. Flex your feet, reach back and get your ankles. Flex your feet again and feel how the chest lifts up. Pull your legs up, kick back and up, point your feet, lift up, release down, place your hands right underneath your shoulders, do your leg actions again, and push yourself up into Bhujangasana, cobra pose, baby cobra with your hands right underneath your shoulders. Then come down and walk your hands back one hand's length, make sure your legs are engaged and push up into a little bit bigger baby cobra. <laughs> and then come down, then hands back by your waist now, keep your legs strong and then come all the way up and then lower yourself down and then roll over to your side and then roll over onto your, uh, go ahead and sit up into Dandasana. So those are the belly down back bends and they, re they strengthen the back and they also require a good bit of core work. Okay. This next little set of things in this sequence is even more core work. Okay. Navasana, which is boat pose and Ardha Navasana. Okay. So coming into Dandasana, do all of your same leg actions. Roll the shoulders back and you should feel some nice chest opening from that backward bending work. Move your hands back just a little bit behind your buttocks and you can lean back a little bit and lift your legs up so that your feet are right in line with your head and then stretch your arms out. Navasana and interlace your fingers behind your head. Roll back into Ardha Navasana, back into Navasana and back to Dandasana. And we'll do it one more time. So Dandasana, sit up straight and tall, feel the broadening across the collarbones. Move your hands back a little bit. So you get that nice opening in the front body. Lift your legs up so they're even with your head, stretch your arms out. Then come back more into the sacrum and lower your legs for Narda Navasana, back up to Navasana, and then back down to Dandasana. Now, finally, you get to lie down on your back. <laughs> so we've been upside down. That's actually kind of interesting thinking about in terms of the sequence, right? It starts off with upside down. And you do a bunch of standing upright work, forward bending work, standing up, belly down, back bend work. And now we're doing laying down, sitting up again. And then now we're lying down on the back for Urdhva Prasarga Padasana. So we've really gone through almost every orientation of the body with respect to the ground and the ceiling. The main one we haven't done is Anantasana, where you lie on your side, but we did do a lot of side stretching. And like part and part, part and well, you know, we did. That. Okay, so keep your legs together and hold on to the sides of your mat and pull so your back body gets long and you should feel your abdomen go in towards the spine. And straighten your legs out. 
Join your big toes together, spread your other toes. Keep your legs strong, and as you exhale, lower your legs to 60 degrees, 30 degrees, lower your legs and hover a little bit more toward the floor, and then raise your legs back up and bend your knees. We'll do one more holding on to the sides of the sticky mat with the hands, and then we'll try doing it with the hands above the head. So pull on the sticky mat with your hands. I really like this one because of the lengthening it gives the back body and how it draws the abdomen in. And straighten your legs. And then from your back body, keep it long as you lower down to 60, 30, a little bit lower, and bring your legs all the way back up. And then bend your knees down. Now, with the arms above the head, it's for me, it's harder. But the idea of the arms above the head is not just to flop them up there in space, but to really use them to get that same back body lengthening. And then stretch your legs up, keep pulling your arms away from your, um, from your shoulders, lower down to 30, 60, 30, 90, and come all the way back up. You can do it one more time if you've got a little bit of energy to play with. And then bend your knees and come down and rest. Still on the back, we're going to do a pose that's called Chatush Padasana, which it prepares us for shoulder still. So walk your feet in where they're near your buttocks. First, hold on to the sides of the sticky mat again, but push your feet and lift your buttocks up off the floor. So this is really just like upside down Dhanurasana. Hold on to the mat and tuck your shoulders underneath you. Pull on the sticky mat with your hands and you'll feel that you get a little bit more opening in the chest. Then interlace your fingers, if you can, underneath your buttocks. If you can't, you can hold onto a strap or the mat. Then turn your thumbs down toward the floor. Move your shins toward your shoulder blades. Extend the thumbs away from your shoulder blades and feel how much the chest opens. Notice which finger grips on top. Release your fingers and lower yourself down. All right, one more time with the opposite interlace. So press your feet down and lift your buttocks up high. You should feel those hamstrings and buttocks engage. Then pull your shins towards your shoulder blades and you'll feel your chest open. Pull on the sticky mat and you'll feel your chest open more. Then interlace your fingers the opposite way. Then move your shins towards your shoulder blades again. Turn your thumbs down toward the floor and move your knuckles towards your feet. Then release your hands down, come down and rest. And then sit up. Okay, the other thing that's new in this sequence is adding some inversions in shoulder step. Okay. Again, some of you are new to me, which is great. It's, it's thrilling to have new students. And I don't know if you do shoulder stand or not. Okay. So we're gonna go through some of the movements of the variations. So you'll have an option if you don't do shoulder stand and the shoulder stand variations. And then when we do shoulder stand, if you're not a shoulder stand doer, you can just be putting your legs up the wall, okay? All right, so lie down on your back again. That's good for the hips too. Good. And bring your right leg up to the 90 degrees and you have to angle it out a little bit away from your torso. And then just see how far can you get your leg down toward the floor, just using the musculature of the hip and the leg. I can get it a couple of inches. Then you can put your, both of your hands on your hamstrings and pull down a little bit more. Then exhale, do like a sit up like Ardhanavasana, hold onto your shin and point your foot. And then with your abdomen engaged, you may be able to pull with your arm and get the leg just a little bit more closer to the floor. That's half Karnapidasana, also known as half happy baby pose. You would just be doing that in shoulder stand and bringing your, in, your knees down toward your ears. All right, second side. Here, first, just bend the leg and angle it off just enough where it clears your torso. Then using the musculature of the legs alone, can you pull the leg down a little bit toward the floor? Then add your hands on the back of the hamstrings and pull a little bit more. Now do an Ardhanavasana sit up. 
get your hand on your ankle, stay up high by engaging the abdomen and pull down with your arm. And your leg can keep pushing down and just see if you get the knee a little bit closer to the floor. And then release the leg and take a little rest. Now you're gonna do the whole thing with two legs. Okay, so full half happy baby or upside down Karna Vidasana. So lift the legs up, move your pelvic bones toward each other and angle the knees out. And then with the musculature of the legs, you can flex the feet first, pull the legs down. Then you can put your hands back in the back of the legs and pull the legs down. Now exhale, do a sit up, put your hands on your ankles, point your feet, and then with your sit up muscles engaged, pull with your arms and push with your legs and see about getting your legs a little bit more toward the floor. And then lower yourself down, roll over to your side and sit up. So that, that's, that particular variation has been in the sequence with us for a while. Yeah. One that's new this particular uh, weeks is a Utsupta Konasana, where you sit with your legs out, well, your legs will be out wide while you're in shoulder stand. Yeah. But it, this is the same shape of the pose. And then reach forward a little bit and get your shins, or maybe you can get your big toes. Then keep your torso where it is, but can you swing your right leg over to your left? So this is the shape of a pose called Parjvahalasana, plow pose. Okay. You can even push with your hand on your knee and get a little bit of rotation in your lower back. Okay. And swing the leg back out into Upavishta Konasana. Keep your torso as straight as you can and swing the left leg over to meet the right. and swing the legs back to Dandasana. Again, keeping the torso exactly where it is, can you wiggle your legs over to the right? Maybe going a little bit further. Keeping the torso, and then your abdomen moves from right to left, ribs move from right to left and collarbones broad. And wiggle back to the center. And what, keeping your torso as straight as you can, wiggle back the other way. And the abdomen moves from left to right. Ribs move from left to right, collarbone stays broad, okay? So we're just gonna do all of that in shoulder stem. Okay. And then ekapada, which I guess we could do that in preparation too. So lie down on your back one more time. My hamstrings are tight today anyway. Okay. Keep your back, your bottom right le left leg pressing into the floor. When you're upside down, it's gonna be stretching up toward the ceiling. But bend up your other leg, get your big toe if you can. Keep your bottom leg straight and pull your right leg in toward you, extending from the buttock to the heel. Lower yourself down. Lift your leg up, other leg up. You can do a little bit of Ardha Navasana sit up to get your big toe. Keep your legs engaged and pull your leg in. And lower your leg down. Okay. Those of you who do shoulder stand, set up for shoulder stand now. Those of you who are not doing shoulder stand, you can repeat those variations that we just did one more time, or you can find a spot at the wall and put your legs up the wall. And you can actually do some of those variations of the legs that way, okay? So that's the plan now. Okay, so everyone's gonna set up for shoulder stand. We dive shoulders down. So the order is shoulder stand plow pose. Plow pose karnapidasana. Karnapidasana back to plow pose, then out wide to upavishta, then parjvahalasana. Then you're going to come back up to a really wonderful feeling sarvangasana. Then do akapada sarvangasana. And then we're going to roll out and do a couple of forward bends. That's well, do Jatara Parivartanasana and then a couple of forward bends. So I'll, I'll talk you through it at the pace I'm going at, but if that's too fast for you, you can stay longer in any stage. And if it's too slow for you, you can go through the pattern more quickly, come out, and when you're at the end of your shoulder stand time allotment, 
then you can join the legs up the wall people and legs up the wall if, if people are still on the shoulder stick. Okay. So that's the plan. All right, I'm going to take a look at you. So those of you in Sarvangasana, come into Sarvangasana. Yeah, you can roll yourself up like we've been doing. Sometimes you need to collect several of you are. Sometimes you need to come into a plow pose to get. To get more on your shoulders. Good. These look nice. Yeah, Carly, that's a good approach too. Nice, Laura. All right, then from your back body, roll yourself down into plow pose. And from your back body, bend your knees and bring your knees down to the outside of your ears. You can keep your feet up on the chair if you have one, or you can bring your feet all the way down to the floor. And that movement of the legs should help you get a little deeper into the pose. All right, then straighten your legs back up to plow pose and stretch your legs out wide to Upavishta Konasana. So this is, you know, this is one we haven't been doing regularly. Okay. So it may feel a little different. I actually like how it feels and it opens the pelvic region really nicely. And walk your feet back to plow pose. Tuck your shoulders underneath you. Now this one then comes Parjvahalasana. Yeah, so one thing I've been noticing in the past times through Parj, that's much harder for me to do Parjvahalasana to the left than it is to the right. So I'm actually going to go to the left first, just so I'll have a little bit more freshness trying to go to the left. And then move your abdomen from left to right ribs from left to right, and keep your collarbone broad. Then come back to Halasana. And then oil your legs over to the right. And the abdomen moves from right to left, ribs move from right to left. Keep the collarbones broad. Then we'll go back to plow pose. Tuck your shoulders well. And then swing back up to shoulder stand. And this is really my favorite thing about this particular sequence of the inversion is after doing all of the plow variations, there's a lot of freedom that comes when you swing back up into shoulder stand that feels very spacious, free and open. Keep lifting up through your left leg and then your right leg down to or toward the floor. And switch legs. As you bring your left leg down to the floor, really reach up with your right leg. And lower your right leg down. Roll out of plow pose. And first, slide yourself a little bit toward your buttock side. We don't always do it this way. But I've been um, experimenting with it lately. And it is a very soothing way to come out of shoulder stand that keeps the brain a little bit cooler and more sattvic, I think. I like it. I also like what I do more regularly is to slide off toward my head side so that my head and my shoulders come off of the ground. And I really like this one because it feels nice on my neck, but I also get a little bit of more such a bond to work in. And so they're both fine. The next pose is Jatara Parivartanasana, which is revolved abdomen turning pose. And there are several ways to do it. We've been doing it with our sacrum up on the sticky mat setup for a while. So we'll do one round of that, but then we'll slide off of the setup and do a round without the support of the sticky mat setup. Okay, so keep your sacrum on your setup. 
and bend your knees into your chest. Stretch your arms out wide. Pull your knees in towards your torso a good amount. Good. It's when you stretch your legs off to the side, you want to angle the left arm, the knee up toward the right armpit. Abdomen moves from right to left. Ribs move from right to left, collarbone broad, and come back to the center. Pull your legs in, pull up and over to the opposite side. And that's Ardha Navasana, oh, sorry, Ardha Jatara Parivartanasana. Now, we're gonna repeat it, but slide all the way off of your setup. And see if you can just feel a difference doing it on the floor, it's a little bit more intense, right? You get a little bit more abdominal churning. Right? And that is the name of the pose. Right? So you do that from side to side. Then you can either repeat that or do it with straight legs. So stretch your legs up straight, pull your legs in toward each other, swing your legs over to the side, and then swing your legs over to the other side and the abdomen moves in the opposite direction. Nice, these look really good, everyone. All right, then bend your knees into your chest. And I think we have time to do some of the forward bends as well. Got a little bit of time. Okay, so the, the next big thing in this week is Mr. Anger adds in some forward bends after he adds in, after he does shoulder stamp. And the forward bends that he picks are Mahamudra, Janna Shirshasana, and Paschimottanasana. So I think we can probably get them all in and the reason that long stays, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so first one is Mahamudra, the great seal. Stretch your legs out in front of you like you were doing Dandasana. Take your right hand on the inside of the right knee and pull the leg out. Push your foot and your thigh into each other. And that's the leg position. It's actually reminiscent in, of tree pose, you could say. Press your legs, the foot and the thigh against each other, then reach forward and put your hand somewhere on your shin, or if you can get your big toes or use a strap, you can do that. Press your legs down and lift the chest well. Pull on your big toes and move the biceps up toward the up toward ceiling. Okay. And then bring your chin down to your chest. That's the shape of the pose. Then exhale your breath completely. On an inhalation, draw your abdomen in and up and move the breath up into the chest. Keep the chest nice and lifted. Release your abdominal grip and exhale and raise your head up and open your eyes. Or just maybe your eyes were closed, maybe they weren't. I have a tendency to close my eyes in that one. All right, then do your second side. Okay, bring your left foot up. Press your foot and your thigh against each other. Reach forward and get your big toes if you can, or just hold on somewhere on your shin. Press your foot and your thigh into each other and feel the chest lift. Pull on the big toe and roll your shoulders back. Lift your chest well and bring your chin down to your chest. Exhale your breath completely. On an inhalation, draw your abdomen in and up and move the breath up all the way into the chest. Keep the chest well lifted, hold the breath there, and release the abdominal grip and exhale. Raise your head up, stretch both of your legs out. The next one's Jani Shirshasana. So take your right hand on the inside of the right knee, pull your knee back behind you. And now this one, the foot position is more like the Swastikasana. Knees a little bit further back than it was in, in Mahamudra. Rotate your torso over your leg, Reach forward somewhere on your leg, extend through the spine, and then fold forward. So now you've got a seated forward bend. Let your elbows go out wide. Pull on your foot with your hands. If you're practicing on your own, you could stay here for quite some time. And just take three or four breaths here, feeling the quietude of mind that comes. Then raise yourself back up into this concave shape. Stretch your legs out. Bring your other leg out wide. The knee goes back behind you a little bit and your foot is turned so you're on the top of the foot. Then turn your torso toward the front to the, the straight leg. Reach forward and get your foot if you can or get somewhere on your leg. 
Take a nice deep inhalation and roll the shoulders back in this concave stage. And as you exhale, fold down, pulling on your foot with your hands to extend the torso more. Exhale, move the elbows out wide. Inhale, extend, exhale, lower down. And then go ahead and bring yourself all the way back up. Stretch both legs out. Reach and get your big toes or the sides of the feet or in front of your feet. Keep your legs really, really strong and lift up through the sides of the torso. Roll those shoulders back and do a nice concave version of this stretch. And as you exhale, extend the sides of the torso forward towards your feet. Pull on your feet with your hands and keep your elbows out wide as you extend your spine downward towards your legs. You can come up a little bit and inhale and get a little bit more extension. Exhale, pull yourself down. You'll leave it a little bit up to you how long you want to stay. But then after you do Paschimottanasana, you're just going to come back up, roll back, and lie down in Shavasana. It's a really nice transition. I really like it. From the Paschimottanasana, rolling back into Shavasana. If you need something for your Shavasana to be a pleasant experience, take it. But it's actually, to me, quite pleasant just to roll and be right back flat on the floor. Let your eyes release into the back of your head. Let your tongue release away from the roof of your mouth. Unclench your jaw. Let the back of the throat release. Let the sides of the throat release. Let the base of the throat release. Let your ears draw inward. Completely relax the features of your face. Become quiet within. Another nifty thing to think about in terms of the sequence is shoulder stand is a very soothing pose for the brain. Then you do the forward bends, which are also very soothing for the brain. And then you continue that soothing feeling in your final Shavasana. So it's a really nice, well-sequenced ending. And take a couple deeper breaths. Let your eyes release and well, put your hands on your rib cage, sorry. Bend your knees, roll to your side, and use your hands to press yourself back up. Sit up straight and tall. Lift your chest well. Close your eyes as you fold your palms together at your heart. Observe your the fact that your practice has on you. Observe it on every layer of your being, from the physical to the most deeply spiritual. In gratitude to the benefit you receive from your practice of yoga, in gratitude to the people you have the opportunity to learn and study and practice yoga with, and in gratitude to the lineage of Hatha Yoga itself, as practiced by BKS Iyengar, reaching back to the sages of India, down through a line of teachers and students to you here on the mat in Austin, Texas, Waco, Texas, Washington State, Paris, France, wherever you happen to be in this world through the miracle of Zoom. Namaste. Happy Saturday, everyone. Very good. Thanks, Ann. Sure. Thanks, Ann. You're welcome. Good to see you. Thank you, too. Thank you Ann. You're welcome. It was a great class, a Zoom class. It was 